Hello everyone and welcome back to Rheumatology for Medical Student and Intern. Today our special guest is again Dr. Jacqueline Jane. All right, Jackie, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, Dr. Tran? Fabulous. Doing really well after a long, long working day in my clinic. Today we'll talk about a very common uh, topic that you may hear about. Uh, and what is that? Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia, because we saw a patient together today. Uh, Jackie, can you share with us um, about this patient? Yeah, so today we saw a 40-year-old woman, and she presented with diffuse pain um, in the occiput, her back, arms, her legs, um, knees bilaterally. Um, and she also had fatigue, difficulty sleeping, and depression. This is a quite common presentation you see in internal medicine um, or family medicine, and then refer to rheumatology. And how do we come up with this diagnosis? Yeah, so this patient, she had many symptoms that were consistent with fibromyalgia. Also her demographic, it occurs more often in females, especially ages 30 to 55. But the diagnosis of fibromyalgia is a diagnosis of exclusion. Mm -hmm. And so what this means is that we need a detailed history and physical to help rule out other possible diagnoses. And then also some labs and x-rays to rule out other um, conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, um, or other types of arthritis that could be causing her pain. Uh, and lastly, there's um, the widespread pain index scale and the symptom severity scale that can be used to make this diagnosis. Exactly. For this particular patient, we look at her labs and she does not have rheumatoid um, factor, anti-CCP was negative. Basically, many labs we rent and come back with normal. So remember, this is a disease of exclusion. So you need to make sure she does not have common pain problem or common reason why she have diffuse joint pain. Uh, so, so she does not have lupus. She does not have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and then that's why we think uh, she may have fibromyalgia. Now let's uh, move on. Uh, how do we treat this condition? Yeah, so the treatment for fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia is multifactorial, which this means that there's many different modalities to treat it. So we use physical therapy, we use medication, we use exercise, we also try to help with their sleep if they're having issues sleeping, mm -hmm. um, and also with patient education about fibromyalgia. Well, it sounds like we have to do many type of treatment, right? Uh, from physical therapy, from medication, counseling, educating, but that exactly what is fibromyalgia. This is a multi-system uh, involvement, very complex, and this is quite common that you see um, psychiatrists, rheumatologists, and neurologists. We all together to see this patient along with a family doctor. Now, uh, when you mentioned about multifactorial patient education, what is the key thing? For example, you spend a lot of time with the ladies, remember that? Mm -hmm. What's the one key thing you really want to tell her? Yeah, so one thing is you kind of want to talk to patients about their psychosocial history, which means incidents that could have happened in the past. There are some triggers for fibromyalgia that include abuse, mm -hmm. um, also history of trauma. So some patients that have had whiplash or a car accident, um, these are all triggers for fibromyalgia. That's very true. If you spend time and take a good history, you figure out like Jackie did a fabulous job. The patient was able to tell Jackie what happened years ago, right? It's not just today. And we think that may contribute to her fibromyalgia conditions. Now, beside educating patient, uh, let's talk about medication because mm -hmm. that's what we <laughs> often use, right? So from what you see a patient today, what medication you would give her? Yeah, so there's several different types of medication that can be used for fibromyalgia. Um, SNRIs can be used, so for example, Cymbalta or uh, Milnasopran can be used. Also, pregabalin and venlafaxine. Venlafaxine is not as used as commonly and usually is used for patients that um, are unable to afford SNRIs. Mm -hmm. And then TCAs such as amitriptyline can also be used. The medication kind of depends on what other underlying symptoms the patient is having. So milnasopram is good for patients that are having difficulty um, with like a brain fog with their fibromyalgia, like they don't feel like they're able to think clearly. Um, pregabalin is very helpful for patients that also have problems sleeping. Um, and duloxetine is good for patients that um, might also have um, depression as one of their major symptoms. Exactly. 
when you talk about treatment, we need to identify each patient risk and also their scenario, their situation, to figure out what medication would work best for them. For example, you mentioned about depression, you mentioned about anxiety, so it depends on the subtype of, for example, depression and fibromyalgia, we will we'll pick the medication that likely help both depression and pain. Now, there's one medication that I usually advise my resident and my student do not use in fibromyalgia. Do you know what it is? Mm -mm. Narcotic, right? Because narcotics, um, you know, it is good for acute pain. For example, uh, any type of injury, cancer pain, but long term why uh, we rarely use, I say rarely, that means sometimes we do in fibromyalgia, but not always. Uh, we rarely use uh, narcotic in fibromyalgia because we like to try many other medication or many modality before we go to narcotics. So that's one thing that we can um, try before using narcotics. Um, anything else you want to share with us about this case? Um, for this patient, um, how would you differentiate between her depression and fibromyalgia? And are there any um, overlying um, symptoms between the two? So between fibromyalgia and, and other? And depression or even other um, like somatic um, psychological disorders. It is difficult to see a distinct, different or clear line between the tools because fibromyalgia involved with many systems and you can tell depression, anxiety could be a portion of fibromyalgia. So my answer usually is that no, you won't see a clear cut between the two. However, I try to see uh, fibromyalgia as an overall picture, a bigger one. But you try to pick what is the main one from that. For example, this patient we saw today, uh, she have history of abuse, she depressed, uh, and then anxiety. So, so those are the ones that I think stand out in addition to her joy pain. Now with that, we'll, we'll pick a medication that likely treat both of her conditions. But like you just asked, it's, it's very hard to see the distinguish um, between fibromyalgia and depression or anxiety alone because many times they could overlap. Now, so uh, we talk about medication, we talk about treatment-wise. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about um, a newer medication or newer treatment that sometimes people online or <laughs> Google talk about that? Do you know any of those? Um, so one treatment that um, is newer is naltrexone. So low-dose naltrexone has started to be um, incorporated into the treatment for patients with fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. But another um, one that is most commonly <laughs> Googled and people with pain kind of want to know about is, should they use cannabis for fibromyalgia? <laughs> That's a great question, <laughs> especially in California. Now, when I see questions like this, the, the way that we usually, and I think we should do it, look at the evidence. Because as uh, physicians and also scientists, we need to have enough evidence to support any type of treatment. Now, cannabis, uh, by far, the FDA approval is for seizure activity, not for pain. And by far, we do not have enough evidence to support the use of cannabis in fibromyalgia. Um, so that's how I tell my patient, usually we don't have enough <laughs> yet uh, evidence. Uh, we may or we may not in the future, but at the moment, because we don't have, I would not use it. Now, low dose naltrexone is a different story because we have some randomized control to compare and yet there are some improvement uh, with low dose naltrexone like you, you just mentioned here. And this is the reason why sometimes I do use it here to treat fibromyalgia. But again, after I try physical therapy, uh, psychiatry and other modality before I go to um, this particular medications. That's cool. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me go back to you as, a, your, as another future rheumatologist mm -hmm. here. What is your impression about fibromyalgia before coming to see the patient together? And what is your impression after seeing her? What is your thoughts? Yes, I don't think I knew as much about the treatments for fibromyalgia um, and also how multifactorial it was and also how many specialties are typically involved for patients with fibromyalgia, including psychiatry, um, to help them with the depression if they're struggling with that, uh, maybe even sleep medicine if they're having issues sleeping. 
Um, so I found that interesting, how many people were involved to help treat them. So are you afraid of fibromyalgia now, or no? <laughs> no, I don't think I was afraid of it when I came in, but I think it um, definitely became more interesting um, to learn about the therapies for fibromyalgia. The reason I'm asking um, Jackie this question because um, when sometimes when I arrive in the hospital, when I assign student to fibromyalgia, <laughs> especially the first or second year, not not you guys, now you become the master of history, people look at me and say, "Wow, that's a very complex disease." It is. It is truly indeed a, a complex disease. However, if you guys like Jackie approach the patient systemically, remember you go back to history, go back to where the symptoms started when and what happened and like Jackie just did a fabulous job she note all of those symptoms she put together and that's when we come up with a diagnosis one thing we would like to share with you guys is even a complex disease like fibromyalgia is it okay don't be afraid medical student it's okay <laughs> like Jackie um, just take history uh, ask question and we will find out together anything else Jackie um, I think that in this patient, we re definitely realized how important the psych questions are, which I think are sometimes overlooked, and taking a detailed psych history of the patient um, kind of helped us pinpoint what might have triggered this fibromyalgia in her, and also where she might need additional therapy, including talking to a therapist and having a psychiatrist as part of her team. That's very true. Um, psychiatry, indeed, um, would be a very important specialty uh, for you guys when you rotate during your four-year medical school. I hope you will enjoy that rotation because no matter what field or what specialty you're going to, like Jackie or uh, Aline here, um, psychiatry will be helpful. Anything else? Nope, I think that's it. All right, thank you again and welcome to Rheumatology for Medical Student and Intern and we will see you in the next episode. Thank you.